Try volunteering to an organization that needs that type of, you know, because, uh, for example, if there is a not-for-profit entity that is trying to do something and then they want to get the word out about what they would do, uh, and you become a producer and you, if you are able to uh, do that for them at very minimum cost or and maybe even free, your time is free, just they just pay for uh, editing, film costs, or equipment costs, whatever it is. Uh, and that becomes, you know, it's, uh, they would then market it, show it, to express or explain what they do. And then, obviously, it's going to say, you know, who produced it? And if you do a really good job, it comes back to you. And let's say you do five or six of those. Next time there's not for profit looking for that, who are they going to come to? Come to you. And if you have a few of those under the belt, the next time you pitch an idea to a uh, either for sh some sort of a short this, uh, documentary or any things like that. You, you can show in your portfolio, well, these are all things that I've done. These are all the impact that it's had. And then you're building a portfolio. Okay? And, and that seems to be one of the things that's worked for me extremely well, uh, doing those kind of, engaging yourself in those kind of things. It's also fun to be sort of giving uh, some of your time for a good cause. Okay, so you're doing you're doing sort of both things at the same time, but at the same time you're marketing in the film. I mean, it's all about marketing you. Right? When you when you when you go and market something or pitch an idea, people are looking at because they know that if with the right amount of money, you can get the right technicians, you can get all the graphic, you know, you can get all the post production stuff, and you can get a really good product out. But they look at you and say, okay, you're the creator, you're the creative person behind this. How? Is it going to be different? How is it going to capture the audience <coughs> and make a difference in how they represent, uh, how you represent the concept, and how they will benefit from that? You know, so I know I know people who pitch to A and E, History Channel, and all these places, but they don't come away successful because they are pitching the same old idea in a new new form. What they're looking for is something really, really creative, different, something new, and if you go as a a uh, person who's never done that before, even if you have a good idea, like uh, <coughs> Jeff was saying, they're not going to take it because they don't know if you're going to complete it. So you got to market, in other words, the more you show that you're able to do things and finish it, start a project, finish it, at the same product, the same time. Start a and the more you do that, you, the more marketing material you're building for yourself. And that's free. In other words, that's all your time that's involved in that. So, Nice. Nice. Um, most productive and least productive. Uh, for me, just uh, general publicity, really. Uh, kind of position yourself to be an expert in the area that you talk about. I've already kind of mentioned that. Least productive for me would be just simply advertising, just literally taking out an ad. I think uh, people get swayed by that kind of thing. Oh, there's a million people that read this, and you know, if, if they all send me a dollar, I'll be rich. Well, you know, you'll be lucky in the million people if if one percent will even look at your ad, and then you'll be even better if if one percent of that will even be moved to do anything beyond that. So now you're talking at you know. Three people. <laughs> I think sometimes people are shocked. They take out an ad and, and, and nobody responds. Yeah, and, and when I say advertising, I'm not meaning just print. I'm talking just any kind of advertising, whether that's you take out a banner ad and those kinds of things. But the, the more subtler forms, I think, have always worked. I, I look at everything as being a marketing opportunity. Uh, finding out, you know, we, we throw that word networking about all the time. But, but the world is a great big place, but it tends to run in little, small, little pockets. So getting involved with one part of the nonprofit sector, like Joe said here, still kind of gives you entree because all the nonprofits kind of hang out together, just like a whole bunch of teachers tend to hang out together. So yeah, there's lots of places in the world, but people tend to work in little cliques like that. And, and I think it's always good to be the really big fish in the really small pond than to be the really small fish in the really big pond. Um, and to start those relationships with people. Because what happens is the guy you do the thing for today for not much money is sometimes the guy that goes on to the bigger and better things. And we typically bring our friends along with us on those journeys. 
You know, when I need a voiceover guy, I know who I'm going to call. You could send me all kinds of stacks of demos, but pretty much so when I'm up against a deadline and I need a particular thing, all that gets pushed aside because I don't have the time to, to necessarily go through that. Exactly. So I go with the tried and true, and I, and I hire my friends consistently with what I do, and, 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 and that's reciprocated. But I don't network with the condition that, oh, if I help you out, you have to help me. I, I don't believe in that. I believe in just helping people, and if something, you know, what goes around comes around, ultimately comes back to you that way. Uh, so those are things that have always worked for me, but the traditional forms of promotion, I think, just don't. <coughs> you really have to be creative. Uh, one of my favorite things that, uh, that a band one did, they were actually called Government Cheese, and, and when they were marketing their CD, they had big, huge, five-pound blocks of government cheese delivered to people. Now, that's excessive and, and a bit of a stunt, but, you know, it sticks in my mind. That's like 20 years ago I heard that story, and it still sticks in my mind as a kind of a clever idea. Uh, you know, a little extreme, but you can find those little bits and pieces. And again, know that the media, you'll never make enemies with people who buy ink by the barrel. So the media is your friend, the print media is your friend, as is, and I think sometimes people forget about the television media, that you can pitch an idea to a local newspaper just as easy as you can here to Channel 7 or Channel 5 or any of those, because again, they are hungry for content. Uh, and they do more than they ever did, because I mean, they all have a morning show now, all the television things here locally, they, they're always looking for that little hook. So think in terms of hooks that you can kind of hang a story on. Not like, we made a movie, oh, come, come, come write a story about us. Have a hook that they can run with. What's special about it, for what it's worth.